I recently upgraded from the 2018 Intel i7 MacBook Pro to the 2021 MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. And today I'm just gonna compare the two to see whether it was really worth the upgrade based on just my practical everyday use case. And while I really love to nerd out as much as the next guy with like benchmarks and scores and all that kind of stuff, what really matters to me when it comes to my computer performance is just my day-to-day -day task. So today I'm just gonna go through four key areas that really matter to me when it comes to just daily performance with a bonus area at the very end where I'll talk about a few of just the more fun things like MagSafe, the lack of touch bar and the HDR ProMotion display. So my typical daily use case of my MacBook is for web browsing, sending and receiving emails, watching video on platforms like YouTube and Netflix from time to time, and then my main work, which is video editing. So the first key area I wanna talk about is portability. Now, when I go to work, I generally ride my electric skateboard. And so I put my MacBook into my backpack and that's how I carry it to work. Now the new MacBook Pro is definitely a little bit heavier than my 2018 model. It's not significantly heavier, but you definitely notice it. And I notice it in my backpack as well as when I'm carrying it in my hands. And speaking of which, I've noticed that particularly when I'm at the office at work, I'm less inclined to pick it up and carry it around with me as opposed to my older MacBook. And I think it's just because the older MacBook, because it's got that sort of more curved design and it looks a bit more ergonomic, it actually feels kind of nicer to hold. Whereas the newer kind of squared off chunky design of the 2021 MacBook Pro doesn't feel quite as nice to hold. Plus the extra little bit of weight means I generally just end up leaving my MacBook in the one spot throughout the whole day. Overall, I think I'll miss the 2018 design a little bit just in that regard. It feels a little bit nicer to hold. It's a little bit easier to carry around, but I'm definitely a fan of the aesthetic of the sort of chunkier squared off look of the 2021 MacBook Pro. So it's kind of pros and cons. I think overall in terms of portability, the 2018 wins by a little bit. But that's okay, because that leads me to the number two area, which I like to talk about, which is battery life. And the 2021 MacBook Pro wins hands down. The battery life on this machine is so much better than my 2018 MacBook Pro. Generally, I'd say my 2018 MacBook would last maybe four, five hours on a charge. So I'd always have to take my charger with me to work and then plug it in maybe halfway through the day which is fine and totally understandable. Like I didn't usually have too much of a problem with it. It was just a minor inconvenience. While the 2021 MacBook Pro lasts me the entire day, like an eight hour day in the office easily. And that's while I'm doing things like watching the odd video, browsing the web, doing emails, uh, doing things in my calendar. And then even one day recently, I spent a good two hours creating a LUT in, in DaVinci Resolve and it didn't really affect my battery performance at all. By the end of the day, I think I still had like 40, 50% battery. So the 2021 MacBook Pro wins the battery competition hands down. It's so much better. Definitely makes life a lot easier uh, when it comes to going to work. So really happy there. The third area is just general speed of the computer and ease of use. Now in general, obviously the 2021 MacBook Pro definitely feels snappier. Apps open faster, web pages load faster, things like that. Plus one of my favorite things, it's just kind of a small thing, but it's a big deal to me, is that when you open the 2021 MacBook Pro from sleep, it instantly starts up and you can get straight into whatever you wanna do. Whereas my old 2018 MacBook Pro, you would definitely have to wait a little bit for the computer to come out of sleep mode and then wake up properly so you can actually start using apps. Now I kind of wonder if the Pro Motion display, which means it's got a higher refresh rate, helps the computer to feel a bit more snappy because the motion is smoother and things are happening in kind of a less jittery way. I wonder if maybe that's helping add to my perception that the computer is faster. But I mean, overall, I wouldn't have purchased the new MacBook Pro just for a slightly faster general use performance boost. My 2018 MacBook Pro is still perfectly fine for just everyday use, but that instant wake is definitely a huge plus. The fourth area I want to talk about is video editing performance. And this is kind of the main reason why I wanted to upgrade from my 2018 to the 2021. Now, again, overall, the new MacBook Pro is definitely faster, definitely handles video a lot better than it did on my 2018 machine. For a slightly more in-depth comparison, definitely check out my i7 versus M1 Pro video when it comes to Final Cut. And what I was looking for was really just a boost in, in the overall speed of my workflow. 
And the M1 Pro definitely improves the speed of my workflow, but it's not a huge night and day difference. I kind of feel like it's maybe 25 or 30% faster than my 2018 workflow which is still significant, but it's not like double the speed or anything like that, which is kind of what I expected. I kind of expected it to be more like double the speed, but to me, considering how much video editing I do every week, it still makes it worth it because saving 20 or 30% of my time on every single video project definitely adds up over the course of a week or a month. Now I have noticed with my M1 Pro MacBook that it really struggles to render multiple layers of animation. If I try and animate multiple layers of text or video or anything like that, it really starts to struggle. Even to the point where I've noticed that the entire Mac will crash if you've got too many layers of animation trying to render at once. Now this is definitely pretty annoying and I'm hoping that Apple will release an update Final Cut or with the M1 Pro that will solve the issue. But it does also make me wonder that maybe I should have upgraded to 32 gigabytes of RAM instead of just sticking with the 16 gigabytes. Besides from the animation, like I said, handling video, it's amazing. It does a really great job of handling all the 4K SLG2 footage that I throw at it. And I'm able to edit really easily in like the high quality preview mode with multiple days of color correction applied. Now again, my 2018 MacBook Pro still did the job when it came to video editing. It's done me really well for the last four years that I've owned it. And I think if I didn't do as much video editing as I do, then it probably wouldn't have been worth the upgrade. Plus having the SD card reader in the side of the computer now is really good. I find that it just reduces the overall time in workflow and that friction in the workflow to the point where it just feels easier. I don't think I'm saving that much time. I might be saving like three, four seconds of time plugging in the SD card directly to the computer rather than plugging it in through the dongle, but it just feels so much more convenient. So finally, just a few bonus things that I want to talk about. Number one was the touch bar. Now, I actually genuinely feel like I missed the touch bar already. I know a lot of people hated the touch bar and thought it was stupid, but I love that it could display extra information about the app that you were using or stuff that you had running in the background. However, since using the physical buttons on my new MacBook, it's definitely made me appreciate how good it does feel to use physical buttons. There's something that feels kind of safe and secure about tapping on a physical button, especially now going back to my older MacBook for this review video, sort of using the touch bar again where it doesn't work kind of 20% of the time, it does feel a little bit awkward and cumbersome, but I still really liked it. I thought it was a cool feature. I wish I could have improved on it rather than getting rid of it completely, but it's okay. I'll get used to it and there's nothing really on it that I used too much that was crucial that I'll miss on the new MacBook Pro. Next, the ProMotion HDR screen is really nice. Now, I definitely spent probably a good three or four hours just watching HDR sort of 4K or 6K content on YouTube the first week I got the laptop and it does look amazing. There is a bit of a haloing effect on sort of white against black shots on the screen, but it's totally fine. It's not a huge deal. And the other thing is I just don't really watch a lot of content like long form, particularly on my laptop. Most of the TVs and movies I watch on my 65 inch Samsung TV in the living room. So it's kind of, kind of feels a little bit wasted on me. <laughs> Although the high refresh rate of the screen is really nice, especially when you're just using it for day-to-day -day things, having the cursor move nice and smooth or feeling like the scrolling is a lot more smooth than my 2018 MacBook Pro is very nice. I think I'd struggle to go back to my 2018 with a lower refresh rate now. Now, finally, the one that everyone wanted back, which was MagSafe. Now, I actually wasn't that fussed about having MagSafe back because I was like, it's just another proprietary thing like lightning cables that Apple are gonna use to make you buy their products. But then a friend pointed out, you can still charge a laptop with USB-C cable. So after that, I chilled out. I was like, okay. And definitely since using the MagSafe on the new MacBook Pro, it's, it's reminded me of why it actually is pretty good and why everyone did want it back. Plus on the USB-C cable on my old MacBook Pro, it was starting to get a bit worn and a little bit bent. And so using MagSafe will definitely avoid those sorts of issues. Plus it's just really satisfying to click in the MagSafe into the MacBook. So the big question is, was it worth the upgrade? And I think the answer is yes, but kind of just. 
I think it's really more of a nice to have than a need to have if you have the same 2018 i7 MacBook Pro. I'm just in a pretty lucky position where I can use the extra cash that I make from my YouTube channel to spend on gadgets that I want and the new MacBook Pro was a gadget that I wanted. Was it one that I desperately needed? Not necessarily. My 2018 still could have done the job for me for another couple of years I think. But for me, I think that 20 or 30% extra time saved on each video project makes it worth it. So if you're looking to upgrade and you're expecting something that's completely revolutionary and it's going to change your entire workflow, then the new MacBook Pro probably won't. Maybe it's different with the M1 Max and you get the maximum amount of memory that you can possibly buy. But with the base model 2021 M1 Pro, it's better but it's not life changing. It's kind of like when you get the new iPhone. It's better and it's better than your old one, but it's not like a completely different phone. Don't forget to check out my productive tech playlist. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you very soon in the next video.